Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial and today it's on how to create your own spigot server that can be hosted on your computer. Now this works for 1.19.3, however it will work for any other version. The first thing we want to do is go to the link in the description to the build tools page on spigot and this is what we're going to use in order to get our spigot.jar. This is the safest way to do it. You could just download it off a website. However, this is the legitimate way. So there's a couple of prerequisites we need before we do anything. And the first thing is git bash. So go ahead and go to this link, download it. And then once it's downloaded, we will install it. Now, the other thing we need is the latest version of Java, JDK. So I tried this with version 17 and I got lots of errors. So I'd recommend using 19. And then I'm going to install the .msi file, hit download and then those are the only two things we need. So once that's downloaded, we're gonna go ahead and double click the git file and get this installed. So simply hit next, choose a place for it to install and then hit next quite a few times until you get to the end and then it will finally install. This takes not very long at all. So once it's finished, we can go ahead and click the finish button and then install the open JDK. Same thing for this, hit next a couple of times and then install, this should install rather quickly. And once this is done, we will be good to start. So now that's done, we can delete those two files, go back to the Spigot page, and we want to download the buildtools.jar file. So now that that's downloaded, we can go ahead and put it in its own folder. And then up at the top, we want to just click and write CMD. This will take us to the command prompt. And then all we need to do in here is type one simple line. So we need to type Java hyphen jar build tools with the capitals in the appropriate place dot jar and then hyphen hyphen rev which allows you to specify the version and then you can either type 1.19.3 to 1 etc or write latest for the most current version of the spigot file hit enter and then it will say that it is missing something so it's going to install this give it a few minutes and once that is installed it should begin to work so now that the additional git component has been installed you can see it's trying to get the spigot file and then if you look in the folder, there are additional files and folders being created. So what we need to do is just leave this for about five minutes for it to all compile, extract, download, and then eventually we should be left with our brand new spigot.jar for 1.19.3. So now that it's finished, you can see it says success at the bottom. And if we look in the server folder, you can see at the bottom, it has successfully downloaded and compiled the spigot.1.19.3.jar files that we need to create our server. So what we can do now is simply delete all the other files as we do not need them anymore. We only want that .jar file at the bottom. So the final thing we need to do is create a brand new text document. So go ahead and open that up. And then this is going to be the run command to use the new spigot.jar. You can copy and paste this from the description or you can write it out. So at echo off on the first line, Java and then hyphen capital X MX and then 2G. So this is the amount of RAM you're going to use for your server. So as a quick example, if we go into task manager and then into performance, you can see I have 16 gigabytes of RAM total on my computer and there is 7.3 available. So we don't want to give too much to the Minecraft server, which is why I only gave two gigabytes of RAM. However, you could maybe up that to three or four in this case. So just do it dependent on how much RAM your computer has. And then write hyphen jar followed by the exact name of your jar file, which is bigger hyphen 1.19.3.jar, and then hyphen no GUI at the end, and then pause on the second line. And what we want to do is actually save this as a .bat file. So go ahead and click save as, save as type all files, and then we're gonna call it start.bat. Once we've done that, we can go ahead and run it. So it's going to run a few things, create a few files, and then what we need to do is actually accept the EULA. So go ahead and close this, open up the EULA document, and then change false to true. And then once we've done that, save this document, close it, and then run the start command again. And this is finally going to create all of your server files, your server properties, all the ops, all stuff like that. And then once this is done, you will have a server up and running. So we can now open Minecraft and join using localhost as our IP address. If you want your friends to join, you're going to have to do something called port forwarding, which I will cover in a different video. So go ahead and just add a new server with the server address being localhost, hit done. And then there it is, we can hit join and we are joining the world. You can see in the command prompt that we have joined. 
And here we are, we are on a Minecraft server, we could add plugins, we could add different worlds, just as all of my other tutorials have shown. So that is how you'd create a Minecraft server for your computer and local network. However, if you want your friends from other places to be able to join, that is where you would need to port forward as I mentioned. So I've done this tutorial on port forwarding before, I'll leave that link in the description below. So hopefully this was helpful and not too long. If you have any comments, leave them down below. But that's it for me, subscribe, like, comment, and I'll see you next time.